Okay, so now that I've shown you the Adobe three-point curves, you should become pretty adept at using the pen tool and creating your own curves. So now you're gonna show me just how well you understand this. You're gonna get a scan with no anchor points on it and you are going to have to create the curves. So what I'm gonna do here is file a new. Here I'm gonna click on print and make a larger tabloid sheet of paper. The units of measurements again will be inches. Since the word is longer, more horizontal, I'm gonna make it a horizontal sheet of paper and I'll click create. Then I will go to file and place so I can trace. Right here in my chapter five again, I'll go to 5.2, knowing your curves. I have no check marks for my options on the bottom. I'll click place and I just click anywhere on the page. Don't click and drag, just click. Now with the black arrow, I can move that back up to my sheet of paper. And now you're gonna create my name. All curves, not a single straight edge on this. So again, you double click to the right of your first layer, make it a template. I'll dim that down to 30%. I create another brand new layer to draw on. I can name it or just leave it. D for default colors, because I'm on a brand new layer. The logo here is not white, so I'm gonna click on the white and hit the question mark key. And now the goal again is you have to determine where your anchor points go. So here's how I'm gonna start this one off. I know that I have a corner. So I always start from a corner. This curve barely bends, and right up here, it bends really fast, okay? So I'm evaluating before I go to draw. It's a long edge, so I'm gonna start here and go up. Halfway up the side, I add a point. Then right up here, before a sharp turn, I add a point. In the middle of a sharp turn, and coming around a sharp turn. This side is long, so kind of parallel points to this. I'll click and drag down. Right down here, this side barely bends, so I'll click and drag down. Here's a point before a sharp turn. Now I've got a point in the middle of that sharp turn. Now I come around, kind of parallel to that, coming around that sharp turn. Okay, this edge barely bends, so I'm gonna come up here. Right before the sharp turn, I put a point before a sharp turn at the top, in the middle of that sharp turn, and coming around that sharp turn. Okay, this edge barely bends, so I'm gonna come down about halfway down. Down the side, then I'll come down here, down the side, then right here it starts to turn sharp. So I put a point before a sharp turn, in the middle of a sharp turn, and coming around a sharp turn. Parallel to that, I put another point coming up. Parallel to that one, I put another point coming up. And I'm gonna keep making those parallel points. Right across from this point, I'll put a point right here. Right across from this one at the top, I'll put another point at the top there. Right across from this one, I'll put another point coming down. And all the way down into that corner, back to the start. If I'm ending at a corner, I hold my Option key, and I'll click and drag down. Command click to deselect. Those curves look pretty good. If they don't, you can take your white arrow and kind of fix some of the bumps if you want. Now I'm gonna look at the uh, rest of the letters and I'm gonna start from a corner. This is a long curve. So I'm gonna click and drag one at the beginning, one at the middle or the bottom of the curve, one at the end of the curve as it comes back up to the right. This edge right here has a little bump right there, so that's a short distance. Option key to start, no option key right there to finish. 
Now I've got a longer curve all the way across the bottom. So option key to start from a corner. There's one. Here's my second point across the bottom of a long curve. Here's my third point at the end of a long curve. This is a short distance, so option to start from a corner. No option key at the end to end. This is a short distance, so option key to start from a corner. No option key at the end of my curves. This is a sharp turn. Option key to start at the beginning of a sharp turn. Put a point in the middle of a sharp turn and put a point at the end of a sharp turn. This edge barely bends, so I'll come way up here. A point before the sharp turn near the top, in the middle of that sharp turn at the top, and coming out of that sharp turn at the top. This edge is a long sloping curve, so about halfway down, I'll put another point right down here before for a sharp turn, in the middle of that sharp turn, and coming around that sharp turn. Right here, I'll put a point across from that one. Again, parallel points. Here's another point, so I'll put a point across from that one. Here's another point at the top, so I'll make another point at the top. Here's a point on the side, so I'll put mine on the side right across there. And click. This edge barely bends, but right up here is a sharp turn. So option key for a corner and go up. Right up here, a point before a sharp turn, in the middle of a sharp turn, and coming around a sharp turn. This edge almost barely bends, so I can come all the way down here and drag. This is a long curve, so that's gonna be three points option to start from a corner and come down. There's one. Here's my second one at the bottom of a curve. Here's my third one at the top of that curve. Option key for a corner to start. I'll put a point halfway up the side, a point across the top, a point halfway coming down the other side, and a point at the end. Three points for the first half, three points for the second half. This is a sharp turn right here. So option for a corner, there's one. Second point is in the middle of the turn. Third point is at the end of that turn. There's a short distance, so option to start from a corner. No option key at the end. There's another short distance, option to start. No option key at the end. The S is a bunch of little curves. So I'm gonna hold option to start, go up, come around the middle of this turn right here, go up. Now I'm gonna come around this turn right here, go up, come across the top of the turn, come down the side of the turn. Right here, I put a point before a sharp turn, in the middle of a sharp turn, and coming around a sharp turn. Right here, I'll put a point at the bottom of a turn, the side of a turn, the top of a turn, the other side of a curve, put a point parallel to that other one right there, and come back down to there. Option key for a corner, I'll come up, Put a point right here for the second point of a long curve. And right down here at the end is the third point for that long curve. Speaking of long curves, here's a short one here. So option to start from a corner, no option key to finish. Option to start from a corner, I put a point halfway up the side. Put a point across the top another point halfway down the other side, and a point at the end of that. This is a long dipping curve, so that's gonna be three points. Option to start from a corner, second point at the bottom of my curve, third point at the end of my curve, 
option key to start from a corner. I put a point going up the side of the curve, across the top of a curve, coming down the other side of a curve, and coming down to the end of that curve. Here's another sharp turn, so I'll hold option, drag a very short line. Right about here is where the turn starts to go sharp, so I'll put a point before a sharp turn, middle of a sharp turn, coming around a sharp turn, right there. Click, click for that straight little edge, and another long dipping curve. Option to start from a corner, second point at the bottom of the curve, third point coming up the side. Now right up here, a point before the sharp turn, in the middle of the sharp turn, and coming around that sharp turn. All the way down here, a point down the side, a point across the bottom, option key to end at the corner. Command click and I'll zoom out. So again, this is what you start with, the very outer edges of the entire letter form. Then you do the openings like we did on the word Adobe. So I'll zoom back in, take my pen tool, and I would probably save your progress at this point, but I'm gonna keep going for this demo video. But yeah, every uh, time you finish a good chunk of your file, save your progress. Okay, I'm gonna do this here. Up, right there, long line. Across the top, option key at the end, and drag a loop back down, three points. Okay, this one is obviously too long, so I'm gonna do it with one, two, three, four, five points. So one at the beginning, one up the side, one across the top, one coming down the other side, option key to end at the corner. Here's another corner to start with, one, here's my second point, here's my third point for that long part of the curve. Now I've got another long part, so here's my first point of the next long curve, the second point of that long curve, and option key to end at a corner. Command click to deselect. And the last loop is right here. Click and drag up. Long line, because I have a distance here. Click and drag up. Hold Option key and click and drag back down. If anything is off, you can always take your white arrow, move this back a little bit and kind of fix that curve a little bit more right there. And I think that looks good. So I'll zoom out. And the last thing is the opening on the letter I. So what I'm going to do is switch to my ellipse tool. I'm going to start by holding option to draw from the center. And I'll just drag an ellipse like that. Right over here is my free transform. So if I go outside, I can rotate the ellipse. I can pull that edge back down. Pull this corner back in a little bit and there's the dot on the eye. Okay, again, like I showed you with Adobe, what I would recommend is you select all your openings, shift click, shift click, shift click, and fill them with a color that doesn't belong. Not white, because this is on a white sheet of paper. So the yellow is showing me these don't really belong there. I'll select the N, the dot on the eye and the edge of the eye. That'll select everything else and I'll fill those, let's say blue. Blue. Okay, so now I can definitely tell the yellow doesn't belong. So I'm gonna select the whole thing. Halfway down on my toolbox on the left is my shape builder. I hold my Option key or Alt key on a PC, and I'm going to Option or Alt click my openings. If the opening turns white, you did it right. Option click, Option click, 
option click. I select the entire word. Now I don't need my black outline, so I'll click on the black stroke and hit the question mark key. So I just have nice solid blue letters. To truly test this, I'll just move my layers out of the way for a second. I'll take my rectangle tool, drag a big rectangle right here. And you can see if I filled that with orange, oops, let's click on the fill, orange. It covered up the word because that's the last thing that I drew. But if I go to object menu, arrange, send to back, you can see right through the openings. You can see if I clicked on this rectangle and made it green, you can see through the openings. Make it magenta, you can see. Make it purple, you can see. So I have truly punched out these openings. Okay, this is what you send to me. An object that I can see through the openings. I do not need my scan anymore. You can fill this with a pattern if you wanted to or just a simple color. But that's how you draw perfect curves without a bunch of points telling you where to draw. You got to experiment and you just did it. So there you go. See you in the next tutorial video.